NVIDIA isn't done yet. Gamers Nexus forces ASUS to change. AMD's new APUs are excellent gamers and Ryzen 9000 comes in at an amazing price. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, not too long ago, NVIDIA released their simplistically named NVIDIA app. Since then, it's seemed pretty clear that the company planned to replace GeForce Experience for NVIDIA GPU owners. Well, it looks like that may not be the case, at least not yet, as NVIDIA has officially released a new update to their GeForce Experience with 3.28. And as you can see right here, it actually came with some pretty important changes. For starters, they added 122 new games. Specifically, they added optimal setting support for all of these games. And you can, of course, visit the link under sources down in the description below to find out exactly what games are now supported, as well as quite a few bug fixes. Now, I do want to really quickly point out that it has, in fact, been a whopping seven months since GeForce Experience was last updated. So at least to me, it seems pretty obvious that NVIDIA is moving more and more over to their new NVIDIA app being more or less the new GeForce Experience where you go and get new updates for your GPU and all of that good stuff. Regardless, if you are still running GeForce Experience, you definitely want to get this update. And next up for today, I have a huge update from my story that I did around four weeks ago regarding a Zeus and what's going on with their RMA process. Now, if you didn't see that video, that likely means that you aren't a subscriber to Gamer Meld. And if you love PC hardware news, you definitely want to do that. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon for all the latest news. Regardless, if you didn't see that video, as a quick recap, basically a Zeus has been doing a ton of really kind of messed up things when it comes to their RMA process. For example, they're giving insane prices for repairs. I'm talking repairing a 16 pin connector for the same price as the GPU itself, actually for more than the price of the GPU itself. Then they did something, this is actually where Gamers Nexus did this themselves, where they sent in an ROG ally for repair to sort of test out their RMA process and they actually offered to replace the entire screen of the ally when there was essentially a microscopic little nick that wasn't even on the screen. And then they tried to force them to end up doing it by threatening to deliver it, not only without the repairs, but potentially delivering it disassembled. So it's almost like they were threatening to do this absolutely over the top, unnecessary repair, and then threatening them if they don't go along with it. Well, in that video, I gave an update that a Zeus had given a statement on it and it was absolutely absurd. They literally called customers just confused and really skirted around the issues. Well, luckily, Gamers Nexus did not quit. And thanks to that, he actually got a chance to sit down with a Zeus and they have formally made changes. So I'm really quickly going to go over these. And honestly, it seems like a big win. Starting things off, Asus has now stated that they have a new inbox. This is executive care at Asus.com. And they've created this specifically to reprocess prior RMAs that customers feel were unfairly classified, were misclassified, or charged for a service that should be free. For those who feel that way, they actually have a template that you want to copy and paste. It's at the bottom of this right down here. You want to copy and paste it in the email sent. Then they also publish a timeline for improvements. June 14th is the publication of this email and template, but they also promised an email this month with other changes. They also committed to refunds of service charges for unnecessary repairs, which customers felt com they were compelled to accept in order to have a warranted repair covered, such as unrelated or misclassified as customer induced damage. Then we have the fact that Asus committed to refunding shipping charges in scenarios where a warranty repair was part of the RMA. Basically, if a customer has an out of warranty repair as well as an in warranty repair, they're just going to cover the shipping for both. Then they also committed to refunding labor and taxes related to the qualifying disputes. They apparently or at least apparently will create a task force team to retroactively go back through a history of customer surveys that were negative 
to try and fix the issues. Not only that, but customer induced damage. Basically, they've removed the power from repair centers to say that this was customer induced damage. Instead, they have to go through ASUS's own team. Next, ASUS is creating a new support center in the US. Then after a year of more or less refusing to acknowledge a micro SD card issue in the ROG Ally, ASUS will apparently be posting a formal statement next week about the defect and the fact that it is actually a defect. Finally, they're going to be publishing a more transparent repair report template as well as changing their RMA language to reduce emphasis on physical damage. Basically, it looks like Zeus is making tons of changes here. This is really good, especially because pretty much all of these do sound much better. Now, obviously, this is only after tons and tons of backlash. But regardless, you definitely do have to give them props here because they are actually listening and making changes. And I know a lot of people want to continue bashing a company kind of once it gets started. But if you do that, it really incentivizes companies to not listen to people because if you're going to bash them no matter what, they might as well do the thing that makes them more money. So ultimately, this does really look like some great changes, though, of course, we will have to make sure that a Zeus actually follows through. And next up, we have some new performance numbers for AMD's upcoming Ryzen Strix Point APUs. Specifically, we're actually talking their new RDNA 3.5 iGPU. As you can see right down here, this story originally comes from a leak by Golden Pig Upgrade from Billy Billy. And odd names aside, I will say that they have gotten quite a bit of leaks correct in the past. But regardless, as you can see, it says according to the MSI booth, so as long as this is right, this isn't just coming from the sleeker. This is coming specifically from MSI's own booth. The single core, multi core, and the core graphics performance of Ryzen AI 9300 series are all improved by about 20%. Now, I will say that the actual iGPU itself seems better than that. And as you can see right here, it says Time Spy is at the level of 3600. Plus, now I will say that as video cards mentions, the they actually took the uh, highest score that they could find. This is once again for 3D Mark's Time Spy benchmark, but they took the highest score that they could find of the 7940HS running at 54 watts, and this is actually just 3600, not even that plus right there. It's actually 26% faster now. Get this, when we compare it to the 185H, we can see that it's just 12% faster than that, while AMD's own slides right here claim that it's supposed to be 36% faster uh, in games versus the Ultra 185H. But as they mentioned here, Time Spy particularly favors Intel's architecture, and of course, synthetic benchmarks do not necessarily correspond to real gaming performance, but Basically, this is actually, if this is true, a really good jump, even though it's not that much better. But keep in mind that we are talking time spy here. So overall, in real world games, it should be even better than that. But when we look at it right here, we can see that it actually beats the GTX 1650. It also beats the Notebook 2050. And of course, it beats the 185H, and it's right around the performance of the A370M and the MX570. Now, this obviously doesn't seem all that great, but keep in mind that we're talking about an integrated GPU and not just any old integrated GPU, but we're talking one with a combined wattage of around 50 watts. And lastly for today, we have one huge report regarding AMD's upcoming Ryzen 9000 desktop CPUs. For those who watched that video where I discussed it, you know that we saw quite a bit of specs, some benchmarks, all that good stuff, except the price and the actual release date. Well, it looks like we're now getting more of that. As you can see right down here, so first off, we actually saw a retailer based in the Philippines listed preliminary pricing and they showed the 9950X at 38,000 pesos, which translates to right around $650 US. But then it got even better because a Canadian retailer shared their pricing. And as you can see, they put it at CAD $839. 
and get this, that pricing is actually lower than the MSRP of the 7950X by 100 Canadian dollars. And when we actually bring that over to US pricing, we're looking at $610, which is $90 cheaper than the 7950X. And the reason why I'm really kind of excited about this is because a lot of times that we see early pricing, especially before a company actually releases pricing, typically it's higher by quite a bit because they're trying to get like some pre-orders, things like that, or they're just trying to make money off of the hype. Regardless, it's typically higher. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that that is the case here, but even if it stays the same and this isn't actually a higher price, it's still cheaper than last gen. Now, with that said, when we go back here, some of these prices, like the 9900X is slightly more, the 9700X is slightly more, but don't forget that these prices were already higher than this Canadian retailer. So from all of this, it's looking like, especially when you take into consideration that they will typically, when they release these preliminary prices, that they're higher than the release price anyway, AMD's Ryzen 9000 is looking set to be cheaper than last gen. Not only that, and not exactly in the good news category, but we're at least getting a date. According to B&H, the Ryzen 9 9950X is set for pre-orders starting July 31st. So AMD did state that they were gonna be releasing in July, but we're looking like that release is the end of July, the absolute end of July, and we're talking pre-orders, potentially not the actual sale. Still, this isn't too, too surprising. Well, with it being pre-orders, that is a little bit surprising. This definitely seems like a negative, but I will say that if AMD actually releases these CPUs for cheaper than last gen, that one will definitely be a plus in my book. Oh, and if you want to pick up one of AMD's upcoming Ryzen 9000 CPUs for when they're released, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next gen Ryzen 9000 or do you think the prices are still going to be too high? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.